Brothers and sisters, today is the Feast of St. Shabal Makhluf. He's one of my most, I don't know, inspiring saints in my life. I just think his life is absolutely incredible. And especially what I love about him is his burning love for the Eucharist. That he, after being a monk, he went off to be a hermit and lived in a hermitage of St. Peter and St. Paul, where I believe before him, his some of his uncles were hermits in it. But anyway, he his whole life was centered upon the mass. And and it's it's this witness about the mass is at the center of the universe. You see, when we go to mass every day or we can lose uh, that sense of awe and wonder about what is taking place. As they say, familiarity breeds contempt. And I think one of the positive things that God has drawn out of the evil, be it in Ireland or in Trinidad, is when we were... When people could not get to Mass, the Mass became reevalued in their lives and that they started to realize what they always had and uh, that what, you know, they place a new emphasis on the Mass or they, they got in touch with their hunger for the Eucharist or that they started to see in their life the effects of the Eucharist. And when they couldn't have the Eucharist, they, they probably experienced uh, so many more temptations. So it was this opportunity in a way where the Lord was showing us how the Eucharist makes such a difference in our life. Now, St. Shabal, uh, when he went off to this hermitage, many people would come to him for counsel and guidance. And he used to work very hard in the fields to to, to earn his food. Uh, he worked in the fi fields of a convent uh, where he was previously a monk. And it's just very interesting with St. Shabal that his devotion for the Eucharist was so much so that he would spend hours just preparing for Mass and then he would spend hours in Thanksgiving after Mass. And so his witness is really important for us in that sense. How do we prepare for Mass? What's in our mind and heart right before we're about to celebrate Mass? And are we conscious that our whole lives revolve around partaking in the Eucharist? You know, we have to get a Eucharistic mindset. Uh, that's what the Catholic Church is. That's what Jesus left us himself in the Eucharist as a memorial of his of, of his whole life, but especially his passion, his death and his resurrection. But, you know, St. Jose Maria Escriva used to say he used to live between Masses. So he everything he did was a preparation for the Mass. And then afterwards, everything was Thanksgiving in his Mass. So he his mindset was around the Eucharist. And we have to try our best to develop this mindset Everybody has different perspectives about life and different mindsets. And, and the Catholic mind is to be centered on the Eucharist. It's centered on our risen, glorified Lord who is in our midst and who gives us his body in a personal communion. That when we receive the Lord, we come. it's a communion between persons. And I said this the other day in one of my videos. So St. Shabal witnesses to this. How do we prepare for Mass? But also, brothers and sisters, how do we give thanks to God after we receive the Eucharist? You know, one of the things as a priest sometimes I envy lay people for is that they they could receive the Eucharist and they could spend often very long Thanksgiving if they had the time after Mass. See, sometimes as a priest we have to we have to clear the altar after communion. We we have to fix things in the sacristy. You know, people come to you immediately after Mass. They might want confession and and these are good things and we have to serve God's people. And and maybe as us as priests we need to probably get better that maybe we could arrange another priest to be on duty while while the priest who celebrated the Mass do his thanksgiving. But the point is, is that you have a special gift of, of spending uninterrupted time with Jesus after you've received him in the Eucharist. It's not the time to go talking. It's not the time to, to, to have chatting in the church, you know, and we need to restore the silence in the church. We really do. The Lord's been showing me that. We need to restore that, that in the church is a consecrated place for prayer. It's not the place to have conversations. It's not the place to chat. We can do that the rest of our lives. If we're misunderstanding what the church is about, that space is about, it's about silence. It's about prayer with God. We can have prayer meetings in our homes. We could have prayer meetings in the hall, etc. And we could, you know, do many things. We can have prayer meetings in the church when it's centered on the Lord. But the point is, it's a place where we say we're completely devoted and centered on Christ. And so, so St. Charbel gives us this witness of how do we spend Thanksgiving with Jesus? Our whole life is about that union with God. And, you know, so many 
graces are wasted in all our lives. And I'll put my hand up first. Um, that I've probably wasted so many graces by not being truly, truly adherent to my communion with Christ when I've received him. You know, St. Therese used to give half an hour of Thanksgiving after Mass. And, and many saints say our degree of our faith, of how much we understand we've just received Jesus Christ, is, is the willingness to stay with him in communion. Isn't that it? If we have normal feelings, normal thoughts, if we truly believe we've just received Jesus... We'd want to stay with him. But of course, we're up against temptations. The devil will want to give us, oh, I need to be here. I need to be there. And, oh, and you know, or, or you might see somebody in church. I want to go chat with her. We have to restrain ourselves. And that's where self-denial and renunciation comes in. And this is what a hermit like St. Shabbat witnesses to, the amount of self-denial. But it ends in glory. It ends in peace. It ends with the beautiful graces that God will give us in communion.